uh, down here, uh, down my ear tonight. I, um, I was on the train and I had that um, is she, isn't she pregnant moment. <laughs> and guys, we can relate to this comment because it's fucking awkward. You don't want to say the wrong thing. And I was going back and forth in my mind. I knew everyone was looking at me. I didn't know just, just say something. So I went up to her and I said, excuse me, can you get up so I can sit down? <laughs> <laughs> If she's not pregnant, that's just lazy, and I've been working with her, you know. Um, I'm in my thirties now, and as a bloke in your thirties, what that means is that um, the rest of my body's now catching up my scrotum. So, um, I've, you know, I have a lot of awkward situations down my thirties, and none more so when I'm trying to talk to the ladies. And um, I said to a friend of mine, who's quite good with the girls, I said, help me out. I said, what is it that the ladies want? And he went, I think I can help you, see, but he was a man with the answers. And he went, the thing you've got to remember with the girls is, once they go black, they don't go back. <laughs> he was a black guy, by the way. Once two white guys, you know, just championing a uh, black love. That'd be, that'd be weird. But no, I said, you shouldn't say that. I said, because what you're doing is you're segregating. We live in a multicultural, diverse society. I kind of got my eye because I couldn't think of anything cool to rhyme with white. I gave it a go. I went with, once you go white, don't put up a fire. <laughs> violence is an eternal. Um, so he said to me, he said, well, he said, come up something a bit politically correct then. And I went, all right. I went, how about, once you've gone Caucasian, why not try an Asian? <laughs> it's all getting this melting pot together. Um, but yeah, well, I have awkward situations with women. I was um, with my girlfriend a couple of weeks back, um, sitting on the sofa. I put on a bit of Heart FM, because that's how I do it, ladies. And, um, <laughs> she looked me in the eye and she said, this is a beautiful love song. I said, this is Grenade by Bruno Mars. <laughs> Have you heard the lyrics? Catch a grenade for you, take a bullet in the brain for you. It's a bit more like an Al-Qaeda karaoke favourite, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Summer, I'll catch a grenade for you. Hijack a plane for you. <laughs> and what you've just seen right there is why white men shouldn't dance. You know, under no circumstance should a white man dance. That's your Michael Jackson, of course, and it's absolutely fine. <laughs> um, and there is one man that did uh, not live by the motto, once you go black, you don't go back, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've had a, an interesting summer as well. Uh, we had the riots this year, didn't we? All remember the riots? That was yeah. Good fun, wasn't it? My um, favourite moment of the riots, because you've got to have one. Um, <laughs> the guy, everyone seen a picture of the guy with the basmati rice? Yeah. Yeah, remember this guy? It was a picture of a guy that he basically looted basmati rice. Um, and I don't really need a punchline, that's just... <laughs> um, but I thought to myself, what happened when this guy met up his mates and they were all divvying up what they'd stuck? <laughs> and you can imagine, I went, oh, right, brilliant boys, um, I've managed to get us the old Sony HD TV. Oh, good work, yeah, what about you? Oh, mate, I've got the old Panasonic DVD slash Blu-ray player. Watch movies on your TV, fantastic. What about you? I was in JD Sports, I've got track suits, trainers, we won't need anything for fucking months. What about you? <laughs> I don't think I understood the rules properly. <laughs> what's, what's all right, mate? Just, what'd you get? I got the basmati rice at Tesco Super Value. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you get that for? Well, I don't know. I panicked. You told me it was going to be like Supermarket Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing about the, the, the rice as well is I noticed there weren't a lot of uh, female writers. And I can only put that down to the fact, have you ever seen a woman shop? She'd still fucking be there now, wouldn't she? <laughs> 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 but she wouldn't know what's in it to go with those shoes, would she? <laughs> Um, I was a lot of that as well this year, you know, in the summer, and I went away with someone who um, afraid of flying, and I've never really understood why anyone's afraid of flying. So I said to my mate, you know, what, what is it? And he said, he said, I used to be all right until I listened to the air stewardess do her bit. He goes, listen, I'm all right. And it's true, it got to the bit where she tells you that if there's a problem, this is what you do. And she said, if you need to send out a distress signal on your life jacket, you've got a whistle and a torch. Now, I don't know if anyone in this room can tell me how big the fucking Atlantic is. <laughs> uh, no, my luck, I'd be stuck with the guy that bags Matty Rice, wouldn't I? <laughs> Unless that torch is like a Batman torch, you know, the Cape Crusaders on his way. That's fucking fine. Um, I'm going to leave you with a little story tonight, and this is genuinely true. This actually happened to me a couple of months ago. I was, um, I was coming home from work and I was on the train um, and there'd been a delay. Now, when the train's delayed, you know it's going to be absolutely random. Everyone's going to be like trying to pat themselves on. So the train pulls up, we all pile on. 
um, all clamped up and you know what's going to happen. You're going to get to the next stop. There's going to be equally amount, same amount of people all waiting, trying to get on. We get there um, and that bloke, we've all seen this fucking bloke before. He turns up at the windows we pull into the platform. Fucking move down, mate. Sure. <laughs> Uh, you try and shove him a bit along and he's back at the window, isn't he? Oh, mate, oh, we're all trying to get on. <laughs> <laughs> try and move again and then he's like, his head squeezed in the door, going, come on, mate, fucking hell. And I realised after a while, he's, he's, he's directing this all at me. I thought, what's this guy's problem? You can't feel like Rizzler paper between me and the guy next to me. <laughs> this is going on and on. After a while, I realised that what he couldn't see is I had a dwarf next to me. <laughs> so it looked like there was a gap. So now I've got this guy going, fucking come on, mate, it's fucking room. <laughs> and I'm trying to be discreet, you know, I'm like, at one point I did this. <laughs> <laughs> now it looks like I'm telling this guy and he's got some more cops. So I'm, like, this guy, this guy, mate. I'm, get, I'm losing it a bit now and I panic and I went, oh, fuck, there's a midget. <laughs> No, they don't like to be called midgets. And if you look at a dwarf, if you ever to have like a one-on-one -on -one with them, you think you could take them. But they look fucking evil when they're pissed. <laughs> so whatever you do, if you're in this situation, don't pick them up.